Buffalo. Uh, who am I speaking with? This is LeVon Dixon. Mr. Dixon, we're not ready for you yet. This is Chairman Jones. If you could just hold on. I'm just starting the meeting, okay? Thank no problem. You. All right, thank you. Good morning, Douglas County uh, Board of Commissioners and also to the citizens of Douglas County. Uh, welcome to our August 2nd, uh, 2021 virtual uh, work session. Um, I will call this meeting to order. Uh, Clerk, this morning, do we have public comment? Yes, ma'am. Uh, we had Mr. LeVon Dixon to register to speak this morning. Mm -hmm. um, before I call on you, Mr. Dixon, if you just want to remind you, uh, you have three minutes to address the board. Once your three minutes is up, I will let you know to finish up your comments. Um, Thank you so much. So, so if you could just at this time, uh, restate your name and the topic you are discussing. You uh, my name is no problem. My name is LaVon Dixon, and I am addressing the same board issue I've been addressing now for about the last year uh, from the standpoint. Okay, you can begin. Hey, Ms. Uh, Mrs. Jackson Jones, I wanted to follow up with you uh, from that standpoint. There was a recent rain, a heavy rain event. Any water issue that you assured me that will be resolved and uh, you're assuming your, your office will be assisting with is, is still ongoing. Uh, I would like to ask uh, that you, uh, if you have uh, maybe 30 minutes to be able to, to drive by the property and actually see what was actually done to remedy the situation. Uh, I think that will give you a clear idea of, of, of the actual involvement uh, and <laughs> the actual uh, 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 insanity of, of the recourse, the action that was taken uh, from the standpoint. Uh, this has been ongoing now for close to a year or maybe a little longer. Uh, I'm not sure, uh, you know, what else I can do on my end to kind of emphasize the nature of it uh, from the standpoint. I think I've sent over videos uh, and you have, uh, I think, stated to me on numerous occasions that you were going to work to get this resolved. Uh, I, I'm going to take your word for it uh, from that standpoint. Uh, uh, I, uh, you know, I, I tried to reach out to my particular representative. Uh, and that's been a, 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 a no-go from the start. Uh, so I reached out to your office for assistance. I would also like to welcome you into my home to actually look at the damage that the water has caused. Uh, I am fully vaccinated. We'll, we'll show you that uh, ahead of time. Uh, from that standpoint, it will take you less than a minute to walk into the house to see where the house is sloping. Uh, to my estimate, after I had someone come to look at it, it's actually down by about three and a half inches on the right side to where the water damage is coming. It, it's it's ongoing. It hasn't been resolved. And, uh, you know, I would just really appreciate that, uh, my, you know, you and your office kind of stand up to your word and stand up to the agreements that you all had made to me that you all help remedy the situation. Um, uh, at some point, and I also like to kind of let you see firsthand uh, what what was done uh, by the representatives of, of GDOT, or, or um, I think it was GDOT that came out and actually performed the uh, the gravel scraping that they considered to be uh, uh, some type of remedy uh, to resolve the issue. Uh, it wasn't part of any specs. I don't think that they they looked at any type of waterfall engineer before they came up with that with with that you know with that recourse or that action uh, from that standpoint i had someone come out and look at it and they basically laughed at the uh at the idea the absurdity of what was done uh, uh from that standpoint um uh, and i think that's about the gist of it uh oh i'd like to add one more thing i i think i've made these comments in this form uh probably about six or seven times so i'm not sure what is the purpose of this form uh, because every time I've made comments or I've asked for something to be done or asked for a follow-up, I've never actually received a call or, or received actual follow-up from emails or anything from that nature. So just some type of just perfunctionary aspect of it where we just get a, a chance to vent and our, our, our elected officials <laughs> just ignore our, our, our request and, and just, I guess, keep it moving uh, to, to use a, a proper, uh, appropriate uh, uh, term associated with it, uh, but I am extremely frustrated about a war issue uh, and extremely kind of disapp disappointed in, into the people uh, that represent my community. And, uh, you know, I pay a lot of money every year for taxes uh, associated with this. I, I actually pay money uh, every month for uh, uh, for stormwater uh, fees as well to, to help manage this. Uh, uh, and it's, it's, it's just crazy. Uh, and I will hopefully we'll hear from you or someone from your office and hopefully you can you can find time, uh, 30 minutes in your busy schedule, just to come out and just see for yourself 
uh, what was done, uh, uh, then, you know, I'll make sure my schedule is flexible so I can meet with you. Or if not, if you just want to drive by and take a look at it, I think you just drive by on yourself and take a look at it. You kind of see the absurdity of what was done uh, in terms of, uh, 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 of trying to remedy the situation. Thank you, Max. I think that's Dixon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's about the, the gist of, of my complaint at this, at this point. Okay, thank you. Oh, no um, problem. I would like to see if there are any other citizens on the line that would like to speak this morning. Okay, Chairman Bean, then I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you so much, uh, Chairman Flux. All right, we're going to move on to our next item. Uh, we have Board of Commissioners, if you would, Kamara, please, I ask you today if you could take a look at the minutes and be prepared to approve accordingly. Uh, County Administrator Business. County Administrator, do you have anything this morning? Uh, County Administrator Sheriff Sibadan. Good morning. Good morning, Madam Chair, Board mm -hmm. of Commissioners. Um, just a reminder that the Lithia Spring Senior Center opening is this Friday. I sent out a reminder on last week, Friday, to let you know that we have a special guest MC for our event this year. Um, we're hoping to invite the public in a socially distanced way to celebrate this ribbon cutting with us. <clears throat> Ms. Monica Pearson will be here um, and representing us and um, celebrating with us. So I look forward to as many of you as possible attending and celebrating this big milestone with us. Um, in not so happy news, um, we have been monitoring the um, COVID transmission results and they are definitely moving in the wrong direction for Douglas County, unfortunately. And so we are revisiting our reopening plan. If you remember when I brought the reopening plan, I said it was based on science, we would monitor and we may have to pivot. And so unfortunately we are, are looking at that and I'm coordinating or um, we'll be coordinating with the chief judge. He was out last week um, and we will be working with him to reissue new guidelines for the courthouse and for county facilities. I will be meeting with directors this afternoon to talk about that as well. I wish I had better news. Um, on one good front, um, we noticed that there was an uptick in new, um, new people in Douglas County being vaccinated. So that was a positive in the last seven days. So we're hoping that um, everybody recognizes the need for the vaccine and takes advantage of this very important resource that we have in our community to protect themselves and others. And that's all I have at this time, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Madam Sudan. All right, Board of Commissioners, we're gonna move on uh, to tab number four. We have a proclamation tomorrow that uh, proclaiming September 20th through 24th, uh, 2021 as Minority Business Opportunity Week in Douglas County. And that uh, proclamation will be read by our own uh, Commissioner Carpin tomorrow. For the commissioners, we have grants um, and, and we have just, uh, our agenda is very light this morning. We have grants, business items, and then we have, that's all. All right, grants. Board of Commissioners, uh, tab number five is authorization to accept the FY22 22 aging subgrant contract from the Atlanta Region a Regional Commission in the amount of $583,923.61 with the reimbursement amount not to exceed $545,822.85 to provide nutrition services, home delivered meals and congregate and case management and homemaker services and amend the budget and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. There is a required match of $38,100.76 included in the 2021 budget. Uh, Dr. Gilchrist, you have the floor. Gilchrist, are you on the line? Yes, I'm sorry. Good morning. I'm Good having morning. internet connections. 
difficulty this morning. So good morning. Yes, this is our um, annual contract with the Atlanta Regional Commission um, to provide those services that you mentioned, nutrition services, case management, and homemaker services. Okay, any questions from the Board of Commissioners? Yes. Okay, Vice Chairman Robinson, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, good morning, Dr. Gilchrist. Good morning, Commissioner Robinson, how are you? Wonderful. Um, I just help me distinguish between a conversation we had recently regarding our seniors. And when we apply for these grants, these are recurring grants every year that we have to apply for. How does that work first, just for the public's sake? How does that work? Yes, as being part this, of the- Is this the new one or is this our ongoing, the recurring one? This is the recurring one. This is for FY 2022. Um, okay. ARC, they're on a fiscal year. So um, their grant cycle is July 1 through June 30th. Okay. And okay. so- mm -hmm. Do these grants grow over time? Do they shrink? Tell me what, what, what's the trend line by way of um, the services we can provide out of these, these grant allocations? Well, we are a sub grantee from the Atlanta Regional Commission. So it just depends on the funding that they receive, federal and state funding they receive, and then they divide the funding among the 10 counties. Got it. And how many impact, how many citizens will be served by this specific program? or historically? Mm -hmm. Well, historically, um, we can serve with the funding that we have, we can serve anywhere from one to five, 600 um, seniors with the funding. Per day? Per, per what? Per year? Um, per, per year. Okay. And five, 600 per year. And so and what is the need of people? If that's what we are serving, you know where I'm about to go with this. If, if we're serving five to 600 people, <clears throat> uh, that, does that address the broader demand that's out there? Give, give us context. Like, well, how many people are like are on the list in queue? Do you know, do you have a relative? Well, um, basically for our congregate and our um, Meals on Wheels program, we do not have a waiting list for those individuals. What they do, they can call us and let us know what their, their needs are. Our team will complete an assessment if they meet the age criteria and there is, um, we have enough staff to deliver the meals, then we're able to provide services to them. For our case management and our homemaker services, um, citizens must call the Empower Line or the Atlanta Regional Commission, and then they are assessed. A team with the with ARC will complete the assessment and let us know that we have this individual that's on our wait list. So there is sometimes a wait list for homemaker services and case management services. There, it, there's sometimes I got you. Uh, but for the most part, do we, how do we make provisions when we have shortfalls or do we ever, I mean, I know you're relatively new as based over time, but can you, I mean, I'm just, I'm trying to get a better understanding is that our, and taking care of our seniors, we're going into fraud and it's, it's great to have a building that they can get into, but, but there's some fundamental needs, um, you know, the, the shelter, food, basics before we get to recreation. I want to make sure that we're putting the right attention in the right places. Can you help address that for me, please? Yes, sir. So most recently, due to the um, pandemic, we received additional funding from the Atlanta Regional Commission, which was the CARES Act funding and also the um, Families First funding. So we received those fundings and using those funds, we were able to address the needs of seniors that are on our wait list. However, um, once those fundings are, once those funds are depleted, um, and I think that ends in September, then we will still have seniors on the wait list um, that we would need to provide services to. Okay, I'm going to park that, pin that point right there. Pin that point. We'll come back to that later in the um, year when we get into the budget cycle. And, and then my final question, which is more of a derivative off of this is transportation. 
um, uh, at, at some point to the full board. Um, we've had conversations in times past, probably two or three years ago. And I think this started even with uh, Commissioner Moog here um, during, um, during his, his term, which was we had a waiting list for people that needed mobility needs. And we always talked about like, with like 85 people on the list and how we're gonna knock it down. And I believe at that time we said, we need to go ahead and just commit to it. Like, why, why are they in queue? Um, and that's just to refresh my board. And I think all of us had a heart for that. I don't think we ever moved on it. I don't know if we appropriated or what, but it was just sort of, why are we just have been waiting on the grants from the state? We're like, okay, gosh, but they're a priority, aren't they? So now that you're here and you can do a better, I'm sure you've done a better assessment. Um, and we've had this conversation. So can you just sort of in the public domain state, what you shared with me regarding mobility and the list and the, the, the separate, can you please? Absolutely, yes, sir. And so we do receive um, funding from the Atlanta Regional Commission for Transportation. That will be on our amended um, grant, which we should be receiving soon, which is um, $25,000 that will help us um, provide transportation. However, we do have um, citizens that are constantly calling now, especially during the pandemic. And we don't, we do not have um, adequate staff and or um, transportation to meet that demand. We're currently doing the best that we can, but we've seen during the pandemic that the numbers are increasing. Okay. So when I say tr transportation, what are you talking about? A bus, a van? I mean, wh what does that mean for us? Yeah. I get the staff part, but explain for the public what that component, what that means to you and your area. Absolutely. And so um, a van would, would be sufficient, but uh, a, a bus would, a mobility bus would be much more adequate because we do have citizens who are um, um, sometimes use a wheelchair and so we need a wheelchair accessible vehicle. That way, any of our team members that are able to um, drive the van would be able to assist any citizens at any time. All right, uh, you've answered my question. Thank you, Dr. Gilchrist. Um, to Director Valentine and to our finance, put that on my tab, my list uh, for Transportation Committee and, and, and budgeting um, at a time to be determined. Madam Chair, I yield the floor. Thank you. All right, thank you, uh, Commissioner Robinson. And thank you so much, Dr. Gilchrist. Any other questions from the board for Dr. Gilchrist? Okay. Thank you so much again, Dr. Gilchrist. We're going to move on to tab number six, which is our business item, approval of change order number four in the amount of $53,265.88 on the contract with C.W. Matthews for construction of the Maxim Road Congestion Reduction and Traffic Flow Improvements Project P1 number 012621 to be funded from the 2016 SPLOST funds and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Valentin, you have the floor. Yes, thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair and Commissioner. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, this item, <clears throat> this project is um, slated to be completed uh, late October of this year. Mm -hmm. Initially, it was gonna be sometime in June and due to the time extension, we're having to have additional environmental uh, items added to the contract to carry us through the end of the year. So primarily this change order is required for that reason. We also um, had reason to add some guardrail because of the slope on the, what would be the Northwest side of the project. Uh, but again, it, uh, it's a $3 million project. This cha uh, change order is approximately one and a half percent of that total. And it should carry us through the end of the contract. Thank you so much, Director Valentin. Uh, Board of Commissioners, do you have any questions or remarks for Director? Okay, pretty self-explanatory. We're gonna move on to tab number seven, approval of supplemental agreement, number three in the amount of $26,970 on the consulting services contract with Jacob Engineering Incorporation on the Stuart, Stuart Mill and Reynolds, Reynolds Road intersection improvement project to be funded from the 2016 SPLOST 
funds and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Valentin, again, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Th this change is necessitated uh, by uh, the permits that are required for the project. We have applied for an Army Corps permit and they have requested additional design on the original plans uh, that are done by Jacob. So this will cover that change. And in addition, uh, we've also uh, filed for another permit, stream encroachment permit. And so we wanna be positioned so that if there are any additional follow-up requests from the Army Corps or the state DNR that we would be able to have uh, Jacobs provide those services for us. Thank you so much, Director Valentin. Uh, any questions for Director uh, Valentin, Board of Commissioners, have any questions for him regarding this particular item? Okay, thank you so much, Director. All right, Board of Commissioners, um, we certainly I want to yield to see if you all have any comments before I uh, talk, uh, tap into our um, attorney to see if we need to go into executive session. Board of Commissioners, you have any announcements or remarks that you need to make at this time? Madam Chair. Uh -huh. Vice Chairman Robinson, you have the floor. Thank you. And, and not to belabor this um, to my peers, um, I, I like short meetings. Uh, but, but the next time beyond tomorrow's voting member, the next time that we will assemble is going to be our mid-year retreat. And oh, what a good time we always have during these retreats, because this is the time in which, um, as you know, we make major decisions. Uh, to the administration, uh, I'm, I'm hopeful that you're ready um, to present to us. Um, I know that there's a lot that has um, time and effort has gone into planning and um, crunching of numbers and all those things are associated with this moment in time. And it's just not about the millage rate, it's about a broader, a, a more longer term future. You know, where are we going? And so to the county administrator, um, have you um, created an, a, an agenda, um, seeing that this will be a public meeting? Has an agenda been set? Um, are you prepared? I don't need to go into detail, we're just framing it, please. Yes, Commissioner Robinson, um, we have a draft agenda. We are um, working diligently to ensure that all of our partners are gonna be available for day two and our presenters available for day one. We are putting together our collateral material for that event. Um, and I feel pretty confident that we'll be ready. All right, I won't believe the moment. I've already set my own expectations. Madam Chair, I yield the floor, thank you. Okay. Any other remarks from the board? Okay, with that being said, uh, Attorney Bernard, do we need to go into executive session? Mad <clears throat> Madam Chair, we need executive session for personnel, real estate, and litigation. And if we could have Fred Perry for the uh, first matter, uh, and then we'll need James Worthington related to the real estate. Okay, and if Sonia you. Compton is available to Solicitor General, she would be needed for the first matter as well. Okay. Thank you so much, Attorney Bernard. Uh, certainly citizens of Douglas County, we will uh, be back momentarily. When I say we, the Board of Commissioners, we are, uh, before I call the question, I wanted to just assure our citizens that we will return momentarily as we uh, move towards our executive session. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to go into executive session? So moved. Second. Do we have a motion and a second? Any discussion? Yes, one comment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Madam Chair. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. It's more Mr. for Robinson. clarity. Thank you. It's more for clarity for now. Now I get these comments sometimes from citizens about when we go into executive sessions and we say that we'll be back momentarily, uh, and we, we come back, you know, half an hour, hour later. Um, I I, I want to because we don't know how long these may go. Um, yes, by law, we have to come back out of executive session to close the meetings, but I think sometimes they hang on, but they're gonna be right back. And so to be sensitive and respectful to the citizens' time, um, we will return upon completion of, of our discussion. So I just don't want them to think that in five minutes later, we're gonna be back because based on what I just heard, that's not a momentarily moment. But I, I just made that point, Madam Chair, I yield the floor. Thank you. Very good point, point well taken. All right, we have a motion in the second on the floor. We have a motion in the second uh, when I 
call your district, please respond accordingly. District one? Yes. District two? Yes, ma'am. District three? Yes. District four? Yes. Chairman, yes, we have a 5 unanimous vote and the motion carries to go into executive session. All right, um, Rick Martin, take it away. We need a team to place us in, in mode so we can go into our uh, session. Thank you, the breakout room.
Okay, thank you so much, Ryan. Uh, to the citizens of Douglas County, we appreciate your patience. Our um, executive session has ended and the Board of Commissioners, we have returned. Board of Commissioners, do you have any announcements today or uh, anything you would like to close out uh, before I have the final closing remarks? Okay. I um, wanted to just reiterate again, uh, Board of Commissioners, we do have our first in-person meeting tomorrow, which is August Tuesday, August 3rd at 10 a.m. We will return. We do have the plexiglass dividers up between all of our stations. I wanted you to just be prepared accordingly. You are welcome to wear a mask, certainly at your discretion, but we do have the uh, some precautionary measures in place uh, ready to go. Uh, um, again, I just want to echo and just to reiterate what our county administrator mentioned earlier. The Delta variant is on the rise here in Douglas County. So again, I'm encouraging all our citizens, ones who are vaccinated and non-vaccinated, please to uh, just consider wearing your mask. That's just very important when you're in public places at this time. And again, I'm excited about those who are choosing to take their vaccine and then those who are still uh, on the fence, if you would just still continue to give it some consideration, it is highly appreciated. Uh, Board of Commissioners, if there's nothing else to come uh, before this work session this morning, certainly this, it was very productive. It was one of our shortest ones since I've been in office. And I just wanted to say this was a good meeting. And um, if there's nothing else to come before this body, this meeting is adjourned and have a great day.